Hey guys, in this video I wanted to take a minute and talk about wire and cabling and also our connectors that we're going to be using for our electronics enclosure. Most of all this cabling I picked up from wireandcabletogo.com. They've got a great website uh, and they sell by the foot on most of their stuff. Uh, they're, they do have a minimum quantity to purchase. They vary between 10 and 25 feet. Uh, depending on what size cable it is. But the first thing is our cable to bring our power into the panel. And I'm using 14.3. And this is SOOW cord or SOO cord. Uh, you can pick this up at probably your local home center, maybe a Home Depot or Lowe's, but uh, wiring cable to go also has this and if you're going to be buying any other cable there you might as well just get it all at the same place uh, I have then just put a pigtail on the end and wired that up and that is going to feed power to our electronics cabinet and next I want to talk about our cable going to our spindle motor this is also SOOW cord uh, and this is 14 four conductor for our three phase motor and I bought just the minimum on this and I think it was uh, 12 or 15 feet I can't I can't remember to be exact let's see does it say on here uh, 12 feet okay 12 feet uh, I like this because it's flexible and I don't have to worry about conduit or anything uh, and I'll run this straight from the motor to the electronics enclosure next is our control cable to go to our control panel right here and this will supply the 110 volts for the e-stop the spindle lockout the coolant and computer switch this and the start button this is 16 gauge 8 conductor cable and you have to I had to go with 16 gauge because I need the amperage because these two switches are actually supplying power to the outlets on our control panel this is also SOOW cable also got this from wire and cable to go and I believe I bought 20 25 feet of this this is all very reasonable less than a dollar a foot and this will just go into the back of the panel and I want this to be flexible because I'm not exactly sure where this is going to be located I know it's going to be beside my monitor and my monitor is going to be on the swing arm so it's good to have this flexible but this is my control circuit cable for my 110 volts next we have cable for our stepper motors uh, this is shielded 16 gauge 4 conductor and this is a low voltage type cable but this is just 4 conductors and this will be for our stepper motors uh, I am using 3 phase stepper motors and the reason I went with 4 conductors is just so that I would have an extra uh, just in case something happens in the future and I need a uh, spare this is flexible uh, stranded wire works real good for stepper motors I've used uh, this type of wire in the past uh, for my other two builds works really well pick you up enough for all your stepper motors and maybe a little extra just in case uh, we're also going to be using this to wire from our drivers out to our aviation plugs inside our panel it's just convenient the wires are already in there and everything's nice and tied together and it's shielded so uh, I like to use that inside the panel as well uh, this is our stepper motor cabling uh, I would figure uh, it depending on how your mill is going to be set up and where you're going to put your electronics enclosure 
will determine how much cabling you need but it's also a good idea to get extra uh, this here I think I purchased 50 foot for the three stepper motors next I have some 18 gauge six conductor wire now this is going to be also used for our control panel and this is going to supply two wires, two additional wires to the e-stop that are that's going to go to our breakout board uh, for our software control e-stop. And it'll only be five bolts and a ground. Also, we're going to supply five volts, 12 volts, and two commons for our accessory port. But pick you up some of this cable. This will also just go into the back of the panel. This is also stranded, so it's nice and flexible. So this is our cable for our control circuit as well. Next we have our wiring for our limit switches, home switches. In the past I've used these little micro switches for my limit and home switches and they, they work fine but you want to locate them somewhere they're not going to get coolant inside them because then they are useless but this cable works really well for that it's stranded it's shielded and this is three conductor again it's nice to have a spare and some proximity switches and other home switches may have a three wire setup so it's good to get that uh, you're going to need X Y and Z home switches and if you have a A axis or auto tool changer later on you're going to need another cable for that so pick up enough for that I would say 50 feet of this to take care of those and that's pretty much it for our cabling, uh, our wiring for our panel. I'm using 14 gauge solid core. You can use stranded, uh, whatever you have. I do have some stranded and you can see that the stranded is, is really flexible. And the solid core is not as flexible. I like using uh, the solid core because you don't have to worry about stray stray wires if you do use the stranded then just tin the end of it that's what I do and it keeps everything nice and tight and tidy together uh, you can use 16 inside the panel but I have some 14 here that I'm going to run to my outlets but for your control circuit, we're not going to be pulling a lot of amps, so you can use 16. You could also, to run to your outlets, you could use 12 if you have that. You may also choose to go with some 18 gauge solid core wire to wire from your breakout board to your stepper motor drivers. I usually take and just use this gauge wire it's nice and tight it makes for a nice clean setup so I like using this I always end up having some extra so, so that takes care of our wiring and cabling uh, also you may want to pick up some crimp on connectors uh, for uh, for the line filter if your solid state relay has the tabs to slide these on you could use those also aviation plugs these are 16 millimeter that I'm going to be using for my home switches these are two pin uh, you can find these on eBay they're like a dollar a couple dollars a piece maybe uh, I've got one for each of the axis you also I don't have any but I'm going to be using a this here is an 8 pin, but I'm going to be using I'm going to be using a 6 pin for my control wiring, my low voltage control wiring. So pick you up uh, one of those. 
I'm going to hardwire it into the back of the control panel. It'll be hardwired into the back of the panel, but on the electronics enclosure, I'll be using a cannon plug. You can also hardwire it there as well, but a six pin, 16 millimeter. For my stepper motors, I'm going to be using a three pin. This is a 20 millimeter. For the stepper motors. Now if you're not using three-phase stepper motors and you're using the standard bipolar stepper motors then you'll need a four-pin connector. Like so. Now this one happens to be 16 millimeters which I used on all my other builds for my stepper motors. But you can pick up the 20 millimeter if you uh, prefer. And this again will be for your bipolar stepper motors. Uh, for my spindle motor, I'm going to be using a little bit more heavy duty connector. This is a cannon plug, and this is a four pin, 20 millimeter. This, this is referred to as a P20. And again, uh, this was picked up on eBay. This is the same connector I used for the spindle for the G0602 project. Worked out great. Now for my control power, my 110 volts going to my control panel. I had initially wanted to use another cannon plug however they don't make a 20 millimeter that I can find that's eight conductor um, they only make the seven and I need eight conductors so what I decided to do was I'm going to use a I'm just going to hardwire it to the back of my panel and also hardwire it to my electronics enclosure using a 90 degree strain relief connector you can also use a cable connector like so if you have the room for the cable to come out and make the turn I don't I'm not going to have that much room because of my coolant tray so I'm using the 90 strain relief type connectors you're also going to need something to label the wiring. I have this little, it's just basically tape with numbers on it. And I'll just number my wires with that. This one happens to be 0 through 9. I'm not sure where I picked this up at. I've had it for years. This is a 3M brand. Works really well. And also some heat shrink. Uh, I got this, I think, at Harbor Freight. This is quarter inch heat shrink. Pick you up two or three different sizes. Um, it's good to put some heat, some small heat shrink around here. We're going to solder all these pins, and then if you put some heat shrink around there, uh, that'll be great. If you can get some small heat shrink. So I'm just waiting for some of these connectors to come in and we can start wiring the electronics enclosure. Thanks for all your support. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching and most importantly, be safe.